Hey everybody, it's Christina from Pretty Distressed. In today's video, I'm going to be making over this lingerie chest that I got off of Facebook Marketplace, and I'm going to do my version of the super popular Anthropology Enchantment Dresser. This thing is gorgeous, and I've seen lots of YouTubers and furniture artists attempt their version of this piece. So today is my turn, and I'm gonna be using Redesign with Prima Decor Molds for the first time to help me achieve this look. So if you wanna see this makeover, just keep watching. I'm gonna be making over this lingerie chest today. I got this off of Facebook Marketplace with two other pieces for $100. You may remember I redid the nightstand that goes with this set a couple of weeks back. This is from World Market. It's really dark, so I'm going to lighten it up today. And this is my inspiration here. This is the Enchantment Dresser from Anthropology. A lot of my friends have done their own version of this here on YouTube, and I have been wanting to do this forever. So I'm gonna start by cleaning off my piece. I've just got some Dawn and some warm water in here, and I'm gonna give it a good scrubbing to get rid of the dirt and grime and grease and everything that is on here. And then I will rinse it with some warm water. Today's video is sponsored by Redesign with Prima. I'm gonna be using their decor molds on this piece to kind of mimic the carved beauty that is the enchantment dresser from Anthropology. I'm just starting out by removing all these drawers. I'm gonna sand these down because I know the wood under here is really good because I already previously did that nightstand. So I'm just gonna use this opportunity to get the dust out of the inside of the frame as well. And then I'm gonna use some quick wood to repair some of the damage that's on this piece. This is a two part wood epoxy. It's a putty. You just mix it up like this until it's one uniform color and then you can put it on any part of your furniture to repair it and it dries really quickly. It's ready to sand in about an hour. So while that's drying, I'm gonna move over to my handles and remove these. I know I wanna reuse these because they are wood and awesome and really blend in with the piece, but I wanna be able to sand the handles really well and sand the drawers, so I'm just gonna remove those and start sanding with my Surf Prep Electric Ray 3x4, and I'm gonna be using those sanding screens, so I'm putting my pad saver on here, and then I'm gonna use the 120 grit sanding screens because I've used this on the previous piece that I did and it worked really well, and this is gonna strip off all my existing finish. Once I was done with all the drawers, my epoxy was ready to be sanded. So I am just gonna sand this down with a 220 sandpaper. And this kind of took the finish away. And when this happens, I'm worried about bleed through, especially with a light color. So I just grabbed a can of bin that I had. This is gonna just block the tannins and any bleed through that would happen. And I'm just spot priming this because I did not wanna prime the whole thing. I've actually never done this technique before, but it worked out really well. So while my primer is drying, I am going to start on my drawers. So I'm grabbing my Jolie paint in Farmhouse Beige and I am making a wash to stain these drawers. Shocker, I know you guys have seen me do this a hundred times. I'm just, I'm addicted to this process. So I'm making a one to one ratio with my paint and water and then I'm gonna stir it up really well. This will be really watery. I'm gonna wipe back any dust I created when I was sanding and then I'm just gonna grab my Zebra Palm Pro to apply this and I'm gonna apply my water paint mix to the entire drawer, coat it completely, and then I will come in with a absorbent cloth and wipe back any excess and it's gonna leave me with a beautiful, light, bleached wood look. What a difference. I just love this look and I'm gonna repeat it on all the drawers. And I can't forget about those little wood handles. I'm gonna sand those down and repeat the same wash process on these. Mm -hmm. 
Now I'm moving on to the base of the piece. I'm gonna use that same farmhouse beige color, but I'm using it full strength. I'm not creating a wash here. I'm just misting it a little bit to make it a little bit thinner than it comes out of the can. I like to mist my brush as well. That's a personal preference. And I'm gonna be applying it with the Country Chic Oval brush. I have recently tried this brush out and I'm really loving it. So I'm excited to be using it again today. And I'm just painting this on full strength. So this is not a wash. As you can see, I did not strip the rest of the body down because that's just gonna take too long. And I kind of had already done that before. So I wanted this to have a monochromatic look, but I wanted a full coverage around the base and then have the drawers have that beautiful wash. And then I'm gonna run my carvings down that my decor mold so you'll see how it all comes together in a little bit so hang tight right now i'm painting the base I let that first coat dry for a couple of hours and then I came back in and applied all my handles to my drawers and then I flipped my base on its back so that I could put the drawers back in and I think this is going to be the easiest way to put the molds on so that they don't fall off and that the glue sticks really well. Okay, now it's time for the fun part. So I'm gonna be using these decor molds from Redesign with Prima. I have grabbed the In the Garden and the Leafy Blossoms to kind of recreate this beautiful flower landscape of the Enchantment Dresser. And I have grabbed this amazing resin. It sets in 10 minutes. It comes in two parts. I got this off of Amazon. You can use other mediums with these molds. I just thought this was gonna be the easiest one for me. So you mix equal parts of solution A and B stir them up really well and then you're going to slowly pour them into the molds. I was surprised how easy this process is. This is actually my first pour right here so I've never done this before, never watched videos on it, just read the directions on the box and it was really easy. The key is to pour slowly like this so you don't overfill your molds and they don't spill over onto each other and then they get like a rounded back. You want to just fill them up just to the tip top of the actual mold that will definitely help you down the road. Okay, now here's the super fun part. These harden in 10 minutes and turn white. So how cool is this time lapse? It's like a science experiment. Um, they're really easy to pull out too. You just pull the mold back and they pop right out. And I found during this process that it was easier to make them fresh like this and apply them fresh out of the mold because they're a little bit more pliable. The longer you let them set, the harder they're gonna get. And it's not as easy to glue them to your piece. You kinda wanna form them to your piece, glue them down while they are kinda soft like this. And as you saw, I kind of overfilled one of them. So you can use scissors to snip and clip off any pieces, any excess that you have. Okay, making the molds was so easy and so fun, but this is the part where I got completely stressed out of thinking about how I was going to place these on my piece, what they were gonna look like once I painted. I had no expectations. I had no idea what I was doing. And I kind of panicked for a moment and I shared that with everybody on Instagram. Um, but I just like put a podcast on, sat down, played with it, kept making molds, kept going back and arranging them and fixing them and clipping them and cutting them. Um, and it started to transform like right before my eyes. So that was really fun. So I'm using this tight bond quick and thick glue. You can actually use it on vertical surfaces, but I did lay this down flex. I thought it would be easier for a newbie. And I'm just using a chip brush to spread out my glue. And as my brush kind of dried up, I would just grab a new one. These are 99 cents. So that was the easiest way for me to spread my glue. And like I said, I just kind of kept putting pieces down <laughs> and seeing how they worked. Um, and then I would wipe back the glue as much as I could, but you don't have to worry too much about that because this glue is paintable, so you can cover up most of it. 
Like I mentioned, it's definitely easier to work with these fresh out of the mold when they're really pliable like this, especially when you have to go over drawers. And I ended up cutting the pieces to go across the drawers. They were really easy to cut with scissors when they're not completely hardened yet. So I would just line it up, kind of score them and then cut it and then line them up and glue so that they look really nice, even though they're cut across a drawer. So during this process I made a lot of molds because I discovered that I really only liked two of the flowers and the two long stems were my favorites so I kept making those over and over again and while they were kind of curing for those 10 minutes I would just glue other stuff on. I also used some tape to tape down like little sections that were sticking up. I bent one of the vines around the side so that definitely needed to be taped down while the glue dried to get it to stick. So I didn't have to use tape in all the areas but any area that was sticking up I kind of taped that down to make sure that the glue was drying really nicely. So I started painting this first section because the sooner you paint these the better off you're going to be. So I started with a dry brush technique so that just means I'm getting paint on here but then I'm removing a lot of that paint with a paper towel so I hardly have any paint on here and I'm just dry brushing these areas. It's gonna get in the details and stuff, but I'm not gonna have huge globs of paint. I thought it would be better just to kind of build this up slowly instead of making a huge mess. I started out with the zebra square brush, but I really liked using the round brush for this. Um, it just got into the details better and was really easy to use. So I just kept uh, doing that dry brush technique, getting paint on, wiping off the excess with that paper towel. And this turned out really amazing. I had no idea how this was gonna turn out. This was definitely a trial and error thing. But the combination of the white resin and then the beige color dry brushed on made this look really cohesive and made it look like it was actually carved into this piece. I wanted to add another little vine on the bottom of the piece coming over horizontally so I went to work on that and this one was a lot more fun because I feel like I was really like in the zone and a little bit more confident about what I was doing. So I came back in the next morning and flipped this upright, which gives you a whole new angle on your piece. And this is the way people actually look at it. So I took this small detail brush and I did a little bit more dry brushing in the areas on the sides that I didn't necessarily hit up with the dry brushing. Um, just using the smaller brush, being able to get into the details just really was the finishing piece that I needed. Once I got all those details taken care of, I added my second coat to the base and I made sure I was really careful around all the carvings that I had on the side not to glob any paint on there. I originally had plans to whitewash this after I got this color on because I wanted it to look similar to the enchantment dresser, but I loved the way this color was looking so much. I could not bring myself to put anything else on top of it. I was just ready to seal it. So I'm going to be sealing this in the Jolie Finishing Wax in Clear and using one of their wax brushes to apply it. This is going to give me a protective finish, but is going to be completely matte when it dries down. It's a really natural finish. It's one of my favorites. So I'm just going to put it on with this brush and then I will come back with a lint free rag and I will wipe back any the excess. And then I'm going to grab my smaller wax brush with this pointed tip to help me get into these detailed areas with my decor molds. 
Um, this is one of the main reasons that I chose wax to seal this piece. Well, I love wax because it's such a natural finish and I thought it was perfect for this piece, but if I would have gone and tried to clear coat on here, that would have just made me nervous that it was gonna glob and run and get drips and then have like yellow drip marks in there. I just couldn't take that. So for this particular application, I just thought wax was gonna work better. If you follow me on Instagram, you know I was pretty emotional once I got done with this piece. And I just wanna encourage you guys, try new things, don't be scared. Don't tell yourself you're not artistic. I mean, the worst thing that could have happened if I would have had to chip all these off and start over. Um, don't be afraid, you guys. That's what I learned in this project. It was super emotional and spiritual for me, but I'm glad I went through the whole process and I hope it encourages you to try things that scare you and just push through those boundaries and don't listen to that little voice in your head that tells you you can't do stuff because you can do it. You can do anything. Okay, it's time for the reveal. Just to remind you, here's what I started off with and here is my piece now. Oh my goodness, I am in love. I think she's so pretty. I know I can't keep her. It's gonna be really hard to let go of her, um, but mostly I'm just proud for <laughs> trying something that I was scared of, you guys. And you should definitely not be scared of doing decor molds. They were so easy and using the resin to create these is really a lot of fun. So I hope you guys try it out. Thank you for joining me for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Check out some of my other videos before you leave. I will be back next week with another project. Thanks for being here, you guys, and I will see you next time.